Hi, welcome back. So, I know we all have yarn stashed. I mean, we're yarnies. That's what we do, is we stash yarn. Um, whether it was given to you, whether you bought it, started another project, but yeah, I'm gonna make all this and need all that and end up not needing it all. Um, we all have that. I know we do, because I have it. So how do you over dye it? How do you make it into something more useful for you? Well, today I've got some 50 gram skeins that I'm going to spruce up a little bit. So it's kind of over dyeing it. We're doing something a little tonal. Just some basics, just to kind of walk you through what I do and how I do and how I come up with stuff. So, and it's bright and sunny out here. What? better than rain, right? And snow. How many of you have yarn that you've maybe used in a project prior and you have leftovers and you don't know what to do with it? Take a look at this. This is some stuff that I have dyed up previously and it's kind of like lost its luster for me not totally in love with it. Has this happened to you? Or like I said, you could have stash in your yarn that you've used and you have little bits, but yet you want to try to incorporate it and coordinate it back into another project to try to use up your, your uh, stash. So I've already, these are 50 gram skeins here. So I've already take the, taken them out of, cause I had them balled up into a cake and you can use a chair back or anything if you do not have one of these which these are pretty handy but if you don't do this on a regular basis there's really no need you can use a chair back a doorknob and you know something else just so as long as you can wrap it around something and then tie it in the industry if you ever get hanks delivered to your door that are not wound up from your local yarn shop. We use like a figure eight tie to tie these to get them together. So I have some scrap yarn here and a pair of scissors and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So once you get it wound up, you would then take your piece of yarn. I mean, you can count them out to be exact, but if it's just your yarn then you don't need to so you'll bring the loop around from the back to the front and then take the section that's in the front let's see if I can get my hands big hands out of the way here and it goes to the back and then when you pull that and then we're going to repeat it again and we're going to take the piece that was in the back and it's going to come up front and say hello and the piece that was in the front is going back to the back so that's how you tie your yarn back into a skein and keep it secure so that way here it's not going to get all knotted up when you go to dye it and make sure that you leave these loose enough because if not when you go to dye this you'll end up having a line if it's too tight so because yarn needs to be soaked prior to dyeing, you need to leave ample enough room, but yet try to keep it contained. So that way here during the dyeing process, none of this gets all tangled up and you don't end up having a big ball of mess. And let me take this off of here. And I only used a yard and a half here to give you an idea. And I normally tie mine three to four times just to give it ample enough. And when I tie at the ends, I will show you the ends here. So when I tie the ends, I actually tie them with my scrap yarn at, to secure them so they're not flip-flopping. So say if you have something that's not quite matching up with your ends. So say that if you might have an end here 
you can tie it with this tie. And if you have an end over, say here, you would tie it then with this tie to keep it together. So that way here it is a continuous, and you're not cutting it and making it shorter because why waste yarn, right? So now these are ready because we're gonna over dye these. These are now ready to go get soaked. This is a DK weight. This does have merino and it also has silk in it. And it also has some, if you can see this, little sparkles in it. It's called Stellina. Mm -hmm. So what I tell everyone is plant-based is gonna dye differently because this has more wool base in it. And say if it was more plant-based, you would use more plant-based dyes, which we can go into that in more detail as we move along. But um, I just had these laying around and I thought, oh, this would be an awesome way to just jump right in here and get our hands wet. So now these are off to the sink just to soak in some warm water. As you can see, I placed all of my yarn into the sink and I'm pushing it down. You just want enough to cover it, but you can still see bubbles coming out. That means there's still air pockets. And a lot of places tell you to soak it 15, 20 minutes. I let mine soak a half hour or so or more, depending on how many bubbles I'm still getting out after the fact. That way here I can make sure everything is nice and wet. Because why rush good stuff, right? So I've kind of did a little pre-prep. Um, the yarn is pretty nicely soaked in there. I don't get too many bubbles out of it. So I'm happy with that. So I think it's soaked enough. I'm also going to show you. I cleaned off everything and I kind of lined it with some huge industrial saran wrap or plastic wrap of sorts. So that way here, I'm protecting my surface. Now, I use professional dyes. You can buy them online, or you can go to your fabric store or a craft store and buy dyes that will dye wool. Um, there's some that does dye cotton, so you have to be careful with that. But um, we're gonna start over dyeing. I'm gonna get the yarn out of the water and wringed out a little bit. This is non-superwash, so if you're dealing with non-superwash wool or something of that sort that's very delicate, you have to be very careful not to agitate it too much, okay? Just keep that in mind, because if not, you're gonna end up with one big fuzzy mess. Well, now that is all done. Don't need that water because it was kind of dirty because these have been sitting around for a while. If not, I would have reused it. And we got a lot of sun this afternoon for some reason. But as you can tell, they're all laid out here, ready. So how am I gonna over dye this? Well, I'm not gonna get into too much information about the color wheel. You probably remember that from when you were in school that yellow and blue make green and red and blue make purple and you know the gist so what I'm gonna do is I like the variegation of the yarn so I don't really want to just throw it in a pot so I'm going to probably use two different colors I've not decided as of yet but this will come out as a surprise I have an idea in mind and um, keep it kind of variegated you know, it is going to end up variegated unless I would really like throw a lot of dye in there to like counteract and wash out everything else. So um, I'm going to get the dye mixed up. Now for wool and the dye that I use, I have to use vinegar as a mordant in order for the dye to set in. So I got my bottles ready and my vinegar ready and the dyes are out. So. Let's get started. So as you can see, always wear rubber gloves and protection. 
I always have enough rags and I actually actually have a pile more here so in case you need to wipe up anything and take a look at the dye well I don't know if you can see but they are of the same color family but they have two different bases it's kind of hard to tell there you go one has more purple in it and that one is definitely definitely a blue as you can tell so let's gear up and cover these up to make them awesome again and I'm ready I've got my bottles here bottle number one bottle number two and I do apologize the sun is just I'm gonna have to start recording a little bit earlier and as you can see like I said the variegation in the yarn I want to try to keep that so one of the ways to dye yarn and it's kind of quite popular to dye it this way because it gives a lot of variation and variegation um, so that way here the colors move a little fast and that is to dye across the skeins in such a manner just going across and how many colors um, and if you use complementary colors will give you in between colors which is always kind of fun now this is an over dye so I'm not really taking great care because like I said dye is wet it's gonna run that's why I'm using a complementary color to over dye one's brighter than the other and as long as we get some coverage and I'm gonna shake this one up a little bit more And I'm going to just continue dyeing in between. And then once I feel that I have it wet enough, because I might end up making more, which I probably will because, as I said, this is DK weight yarn, so it's going to suck up a lot of dye. And I won't get into the scientific like weight on how much dye and all that you need for weighing this out. But and that's why you cover your hands because you'll end up looking well in this case like a, a smurf I've done it before but it's not the first time and it's not going to be the last time that I get like a hole in my glove or I forget to put the glove on because I'm too excited and got stuff going on all right not wet enough yet so I'm going to go back mix up some more dye I'm going to flip these over and I'll show you once I get them wet enough. I don't know if you can see this because that sun is just being too bright. I turned them over and I've got them pretty saturated as you can tell. Thank goodness I've got the plastic wrap down and they've got ample enough dye and how I can tell is that I've got ample enough dye if this water back here was running off clear you would have known that okay the yarn has already taken up the dye but I've got excess water now and not excess dye excess dye is good because then that way here you definitely know that you're getting the coverage that you want and of course Gus is talking in the background he's so poorly done too he wants to go for a walk but his walks only consist of two minutes long and then he's tired so anyway, if you've ever went to your local yarn shop and you went to a dyeing class there, they probably did it with Wilton Cake Dyes, which is so totally doable. Um, and they probably microwaved it and not steamed it in a pot or of water or anything like that. So that is also an option. It does only, I don't want to call it a, complete dye it just stains it that's the better word for it it stains stains the yarn so instead of pulling out a big pot I am going to because with professional dyes um, with hand painting and stuff like that you can place it in the microwave so I'm going to cheat today since they've got gas going on a little 
one poorly done to mummy moment. I'm gonna have to take care of him. But here's the thing, if you're going to use like a professional dye or something that is not food coloring or cake icing coloring, make sure that all your utensils are not used for cooking. So I'm repurposing this old um, dish here that I don't use anymore. And I'm gonna start microwaving. And we'll steam set that dye in there, and there you have it. We'll have to wait for it to dry though first, because that's going to be pretty awesome. Okay, it's out of the microwave. And I have to give you guys a little tip or trick. Um, take a look at it. It's all nice, happy, and steaming. One thing of it is, is dyes still are working while everything's wet and hot. So don't burn yourself, let it sit, let it cool off. Every, all the dye will get used up. Um, and that's how you know you have it all set in. Now if you have a little excess runoff, you just have to rinse well. Um, Dawn dishwashing soap, not the extra super powered bubble, whatever they call that. Um, you have to use just the non-concentrated version of Dawn and Keep rinsing and like I said with this one this is super non super wash excuse me so extra care has to be taken for temperature changes and agitation so you don't wind up with a ball of fuzz now they're all dry and as you can see we still kept some of the red by changing just the color tone a little bit. And some of it ended up turning a little bit more burgundy and adding a little more depth to the purple and to the blue that was already in these skeins. Like I said earlier, I didn't want it to completely change it. I just wanted to spruce it up, make the colors pop a little bit more. And I have this one, you can tell a little bit better. The red is not as prominent anymore, like popping turned on this burgundy and that goes back to the color wheel you know I added a purple based blue and also a brighter blue that was a truer blue so some of the uh, purple here got a little bit darker and as all well, you can tell the red is not as pungent anymore it kind of flows a little bit better works a little bit better would be great for a hat or something or a cow and it's almost unisex now it's not just I don't know boring and dull like it, it was from sitting around <laughs> 